Ta-da! Good afternoon. Welcome back to the channel. This is Butterfly Square Garden, a place where you could be free to be yourself. Still working on the catchphrase. Uh, we'll give a peace sign and a how are you. That's a little sign language. That's a little sign for you because we are learning sign. It's fun. But yeah, this is actually a butterfly video. And shout out to my friend Sam I Am. 83 in California for asking me to elaborate on the way that I make my butterfly feeders. You know, you can buy them online. They've got lots um, of plastic things with holes in it, and it's just lots of different kinds of things that generally don't work. You know, so you can try them, but um, actually there are a couple that works. Um, and the ones that do use red felt and that's why I decided to make my own. It's basically a wicking system uh, using a Chinese food container, wicks and Gatorade and then when the butterflies look at it they're attracted to it because it looks like flowers. They're red and white. It's in a circle. It's got a star on it, you know, and they 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 understand, you know, if you walk on it, it's wet and they taste with their feet and everyone else on the internet will tell you to take a toothpick or a pin and take out their proboscis and put it into like a cap of like sugar water or they'll have secret recipes um, or everyone mixes their own stuff. I just use Gatorade. I mix in some water so it's not too strong and... I saved some money and that's really it. I wanted to make it interchangeable so I could just have an extra one and then when this was dirty because it, it gets dirty and it runs out and then I just want to swap them out real quickly um, so I don't disturb the butterflies because I honestly don't touch the butterflies at all. Um, I just let them hang out on the, the plants that I put in the enclosure with them. And then I also have a butterfly garden outside that has wild butterflies that visit it um, and they lay eggs. And that's how this whole thing got started. So take a Chinese food container. This one has crumbs in it because I, uh, you know, used it to eat out of. And then uh, take a hole puncher and punch some holes in your Chinese food container. Punch, punch, punch. It's got ridges along the rim, so I just punch in between the ridges, and then that's how you get a really nice um, six-figure design. And take your red felt. I just ordered a whole sheet on Amazon. You know, I have all of this red felt that oops I'm knocking stuff over only costed like a couple dollars but I don't know check check a local store or something if you're in a rush probably red cotton or anything you know it'll work this works best so I cut a strip and I drew little lines so you can see that I would cut them in a diagonal so that in the end you get these little trapezoidal shapes and that is the best thing that I seem to have gotten to be easy to pull through. But then it also gets a nice little like curl to it or like it, it gets a bent shape. So if I were to go through really quickly and I experimented with so many things like paper towels and cutting them up and doing origami and it was just like a lot of work. And it always just like went bad so quickly, you know, it just got really dirty and messy. Um, and now I barely have to open the enclosure except to take out old host plants, which are covered in eggs and then replace it and then water the plants that are in there with them. But yeah, um, so now we've replicated the, ri the, the rim and I would put that back in my container um fill it you know what i said it's got gator in here and i would take that out and i would swap it boom that's how you take care of your butterflies they'll they'll figure it out if they don't figure it out pick it up really gently and put it down on the red felt 
And from that point on, after they feed on it, like maybe twice, once or twice, they'll figure it out, if not on their own. And if they see another butterfly do it, they will do it too. So if you're ever stuck because it's raining for a whole week, this is the easiest way to take care of your butterflies. Now, it's important for it to be accessible because they can't just walk up the sides. They could, but it would be difficult. And we want to make this easy, even if they've got broken wings. They don't always have the best wings. So in order to fix that problem, I took another Chinese food container. This was of the white round variety. And I went around the rim and I cut it into a big hole. Um, they seem to fit perfectly, don't they? That's what I, you know, you got to work it a little bit. But this is, we're doing stuff for free. This is pennies. Um, the last thing is I took pantyhose and I wrapped it around the rim. And I clipped it on, you know, with a little clip. And that is the easiest thing. If you don't want to use pantyhose, you can use paper towels. Um, that's just the easiest thing to do. Now, the last thing is, if you don't want to do that um, really quickly, when handling butterflies, they have little like claws. They have like little crab hooks. Um, and they really like to stand on things that are like Velcro-like or, or like wooly. I got to take a ring off to put this on. Um, but that's why when I'm handling butterflies, um, the easiest thing to do is to pick them up. And I use the green because they like this color and it's got fingers that look like leaves on a plant. Um, so if you want to hand train them and also make your butterfly more attractive, um, I, I line, you know, even if you didn't have this extra rim, you can probably even just, you know, that would, I'm sure that would even work. Honestly, like this whole thing, I like the look, but, uh, you know, efficiency. And I got a whole bag. I got a bag of 20 of these. Um, so if I were to just go around the rim like that, this is like a perfect butterfly feeder as well. And look, I've got Velcro. It's literally stuck to it. Um, so you can have fun with this. Maybe you can even Velcro. Oh, wow. That's really stuck. Um, that's hilarious. Maybe I'll go around the rim and I'll Velcro them together. And then we'll just have a ring of... That's hilarious. I'm going to do this with you because I'm here. Um just a little bit more um, but you know that's an easier way than cutting all of this other thing you know you can just and they'll they'll fly and land on it um, just make sure that there's nothing kind of touching the wicks because then it'll kind of flow over and we want to keep it contained because this thing has been in there for weeks no I mean yeah, my butterflies have been alive for weeks. Butterflies can live for six weeks. So I have, I've had 30 butterflies and only one of them died. And it's been weeks. So maybe I'll show you guys an update later with all of that other stuff. But, um, you know, now we have multiple versions. You can have, get creative with it. You know, this is, we're having fun. We want to come up with new stuff. We've all got different situations. Um, just telling you what worked for me. This this is like a absolutely will work 100% of the time. Cannot fail kind of butterfly feeder. So uh, give it a try and let me know how it works. Um, if you made it to the end of the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And hey, we made it under 10 minutes. Our videos are always so long. So I've got to go feed hungry caterpillars. A bunch of milkweed but they're getting big and I really want to try this butternut squash thing that I saw Texans or Californians or someone doing because they had a freak snowstorm that killed all their mil their milkweed um but I've had some success using weird things you know the painted ladies I've I've had enormous success using burdock and the leaves get like 
three feet long. They're so big. Um, and also carrot. I had I had painted lady caterpillars eating actual carrots. Um, and I also had butter. Yeah, swallowtails eating carrot tops. So I think swallowtails might eat carrots. They do eat anise. You can get a lot of this stuff from the store. Dill. I was feeding swallowtail caterpillars dill that I got from the store. Um, yep, I'm going to plant some, I'm planting lovage because that's really good for swallowtails. Um, so yeah, I think I might be able to get monarchs to eat the burdock, but even then, I only have a limited amount of burdock and winter's coming and I want to take care of my butterflies in winter um, and the caterpillars. So that means I'm going to be shopping for food. Otherwise, having a greenhouse um, that will house, I don't know, my plants outside in the winter because New York gets cold in the winter and there are snowstorms here too, but I want to keep my butterflies. Yeah, we have about 30 butterflies, monarchs, um, one swallowtail that are still alive in the other room. I keep showing you guys those. And then what else? What else? What else? 80 monarch caterpillars. I would show you them now, but if I un un clip my phone, the, cam the, the feed would stop. And the painted ladies, I can't count, but there's like thousands 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 so we're gonna have to transition the bigger caterpillars to bulkier foods i have had some success with brown rice um it's tricky you need to get a lot of them eating it and yeah so i've found that host plants work kind of the best but I'm 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 gonna go get a squash like right now and transition the monarch caterpillars onto them. So I'll let you know how that goes because if that works, I'll be able to raise like as many monarchs as I want. Um, because they don't eat that much when they're small. When they get big, they eat a lot. So unless I had infinite amount of plants, I don't know. We'll see where it goes to the moon. We went over. Um, we we're so close. We had such a good video. <laughs> I ruined it at the end. Just kidding. Um, let me know how it goes. I want to see your work. Okay, bye. Thanks again.